Good morning. We're going to go ahead and discuss the driving test. How do you pass the driving test? We're going to go ahead and discuss the driving test. How do you pass the driving test? What do you need to do? How do you elevate and become successful? So I want to welcome you in. I'm a state certified driving instructor. I teach teens and adults. When you take your driver's test, it's important that you have practice. If you don't practice, you will not be successful. Preparation helps prevent poor performance. Let's go ahead and get into some of the elements of your driver's test. If you have questions, you can type them in. Number one, you do not want to exceed the speed limit. A lot of people ask me, well, what if I go over the limit? What if I go over the limit? You will get into a situation where you may get one warning and then you could possibly fail your driving test. Speeding is an automatic failure. It's important to drive at the speed limit. If you drive too slow, you could get a warning and that could become failure. Definitely if you drive too fast. We recommend familiarizing yourself with the area that you're going to be driving in. You need to talk to some of your friends, some of your besties who have already taken the test. It depends on where you are in your friend group. Many of you are at the high school level, the college level, 20s, 30s. It really depends on your goals. And what I need you to do is type your questions in. I can answer those. Remember that you can lose points for driving too fast in road conditions. What does this mean? Snow, rain, fog, heavy traffic. You want to be mindful of heavy traffic conditions because if the speed limit, let's say, is 45 and everyone is driving 55, obviously you're going to be holding up traffic. You want to get over to the right lane. People who can't maintain speed will always go to the right lane. And what I need you to do is understand about traffic being in the right lane. Uh, people in the right lane tend to drive slower. They can't keep up with the flow of the traffic. So what I need you to do is understand what are your goals. And most of you who are looking at this right now want to pass your driving test. You have questions about your driving test. I'm a state certified driving instructor. So when you put your questions in, you're going to get those questions answered. I'm going to do a positive good for the community and you're going to be successful. So if the road is snowy or icy, you need to reduce your speed that is safe for the road conditions. Many states, provinces, locations around the world have speed limits adjusted to suit the needs of safety for pedestrians, safety for drivers, and safety for the overall flow of the community. So you really need, when you're driving, you really need to be looking left, looking straight, looking right. Where is that speed limit sign? Where is that speed limit sign? If you're not sure, I would say around 35 miles an hour. That is super important that you are consistent. Also, if the roads are icy or snowy, you need to adjust your speed according to show that you have adequate judgment. The road tester is not judging you on your uh, attitude or your, your preference. They're judging you on can you control this vehicle. And that's really important that you can control your vehicle. You have to show vehicle control. Number two, failing to show caution and an uncontrolled intersection. Intersections are the most dangerous because you have traffic coming left, coming right, you have pedestrians. So let's go ahead and break down these intersections. As an instructor, I want to see people drive consistently. I want to see you look left to check traffic to the left. I want to see you look right to check traffic to the right, to look for pedestrians, to look for bikers. Every test route, you must at least go through one uncontrolled intersection and one controlled intersection. What is a controlled intersection? A controlled intersection has traffic lights, has signs. And when you come up to that controlled intersection, we're, today we're talking about how to pass your road test. And when you come up to an intersection, you have to really look to the left to make sure it's clear. You have to look straight and you have to look to the right. Your road tester, your instructor, we 
want to see you look. This shows people, your instructor, your road tester, that you understand the driving environment. And that's extremely important that you understand the driving environment. And when you understand that driving environment, you're going to be more successful uh, showing your tester, hey, I have control of my vehicle. Many times, beginning drivers, you need to look both ways. You need to demonstrate caution, covering your brake, having control of your vehicle. This is a lesser known test disqualification, but we will sometimes hear about it from disappointed customers because they literally blew through a yield sign. They literally blew through a intersection. When you're driving, you should feel peaceful. You should feel chilled. You should feel relaxed. And if you feel chilled and relaxed, you're going to more likely be more successful driving and showing that tester that you have control of the vehicle. Let's go to the next one. The next one is rolling stops. It seems really trivial, but a lot of beginners, and if you have questions, type them in. A lot of beginners just roll stop signs. You learn this from your mom. You learn this from your dad. You learn this from your bestie. You look left and right. There's no one here. I'm just going to roll through the stop sign. You're building a, a bad habit, and that bad habit will come back to haunt you in the end. And I'm trying to show you right now, because I'm a state certified driving instructor, what do you need to do to be consistent? How do you need to be consistent, not only to pass your test, but to be a lifelong driver? And that's what it's all about. So stop means stop. The minimum is three seconds, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. It could go up to 1,004 and 1,005. Five seconds. Okay? Type those questions in. I'll read them. Any information on the right pressure to use according to the brake? You want to use the ball of your foot. You want to squeeze the brake. And that's a great question. Great question. A lot of beginning drivers punch the brake. And if you punch the brake, we're going to jerk the car. And then you will get a minus. If you're driving a manual and you shift down to a lower gear and you pop that clutch up, the car is going to surge back and you're going to lose control. When you're driving a manual, you have to be more sensitive on your brake. You have three pedals. You have a gas pedal. You have a brake pedal in the middle and you have your clutch pedal to the left. When you're slowing down to a stop, I would push the clutch in, take it out of gear and squeeze the brake and gradually slow it down okay that is really important because if the car bucks or surges you're going to lose what I mean by the ball of your foot uh, right here this is my hand but right under your toes you have the ball of your foot is to the left you want to be able to squeeze your brake with the ball of your foot, not the tip of your toes, because your toes could slip off. We all know where our foot is, right? So use the ball of your foot. Uh, you wear shoes, that inside part. You want to squeeze the brake very gradually. That's a great question. And get in that car, adjust your seat. You don't want to be too close to the steering wheel. You don't want to be too far away. You have to adjust your foot so you can pivot your foot between the gas and brake. A great question. Keep those questions coming in. So no rolling stops. You have to stop behind the stop line. The stop line is the big, thick, white line. It's called a stop bar. S-T-O-P bar, B-A-R, or a stop line. S-T-O-P-L-I-N-E. You have to stop. Then you remain motionless for three to five seconds, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. You have to look around. Then if clear, you roll forward. It's called showing the car where you come up and people from your left and people from your right, pedestrians in traffic, see you. And once they see you, then you're going to be more likely to impress the road tester and you're showing him or her that you have control of your vehicle. It's about vehicle control. So remain motionless, three to five seconds and take your time. So let's continue. Climbing the curb. 
This means your car actually going over the curb. If you go over the curb, it is automatic failure. What I need all of you to do is stop, check. If you turn the wheel short, you overturn or underturn, the car's gonna go directly over the curb. So what I need you to do is take your time, be patient, get the front end of the car up to the edge of the road, you look left, you look right, then you turn right into the nearest lane. Always turn into the nearest lane, L-A-N-E. You have to keep your turn as short as possible to get into the nearest lane to facilitate a smoother flow of traffic. If you just got here, I'm a state certified driving instructor. I'm going over their driving examination. If you have questions, you type them in. I'm explaining what you need to do, how you need to do it, and how you pass the test. And if you have serious faults or serious errors, you can review this, ask me questions, and I will answer those questions, and hopefully the next time you'll pass the test. So we're talking about hitting the curb. How does that happen? If you're going into your right turn too fast, the rear of the car will rotate out to the left, the front will turn short, and you'll go over the curb. That could be automatic failure. Let's talk about your speed control going into intersections. Control of their vehicle. And when you, thank you, I appreciate that so much. Thank you for the rose. When you lose control of the car, you're going to show that road tester that you're unstable. You have to demonstrate mental focus. So if the speed limit is 35 or 45, you have to drive at the speed limit. Beginning drivers tend to drive Five under. If it's 45, they're driving at 40. If it's 45, they're driving at 35. So now you're in a situation where you're going to have to either run the light, which we don't want you to do, because you could have pedestrians crossing left to right or right to left. You could have bicyclists, okay? It's called a left cross, where you're coming up, making, going into the intersection and you stop. Then you look. And it looks clear and you turn. And if you turn, remember I'm making a left turn, the bicyclist is going across your face and you could make contact with them or a pedestrian. So you really need to be mindful of seeing the whole intersection. And you really have to have like a global view. You see how I'm raising my hands? You have to have that global view. You have to be able to see. You can't not just see where you're going. You have to see the whole intersection. Are there pedestrians coming from the left to the right? Are there pedestrians coming from the right to the left? Are there pedestrians walking and a bicyclist? Is there a semi-truck turning? So you need to prioritize what is in your area. Your road tester is going to simply sit in the passenger seat. They're going to give you a command. I need you to make a left turn. And you have to execute this left turn consistently. When you're in the intersection, you have a right to leave it. So let's pretend you're in the intersection on a green. Traffic is coming. You're waiting. The light turns yellow. Traffic is still coming. The light turns a yellow red. You're in the intersection. You have to wait until it's clear. And then you proceed through turning in the nearest lane L-A-N-E. That is so important because you keep your turn as short as possible. If you're making a left turn, you turn by the two T-W-O, the two double yellow lines. If you turn in the wrong lane, that is a driving error, a potential conflict point. And my hands are coming up like two cars contacting. When you, you make your left, it's a 90 degree turn. It's not a wire turn. And beginning drivers make wide turn. So pretend we're making a right turn. If you make a wide turn, you're going to go into the wrong lane. That's a potential error. Could be grounds for failure. Any information on the right pressure to use when accelerating or braking? Very good question. What I need you to do is squeeze the brake very gently. If you are hitting the gas too hard, the car will lunge go forward really fast. As an instructor, I don't want my students to do that. I want you to show me gradual control. Gradually squeeze the brake so we stop evenly. And if you're driving a manual, you should be squeezing your brake with your foot, 
and when appropriate, you downshift from fourth to third. You can use the engine's torque to slow you down, but if you pop the clutch out, the car will jump back and forth, then you're going to lose points because you don't have vehicle control, okay? Let's continue. Great questions keep them coming in. Failing to yield to a car or pedestrians. One of the biggest hazards of them all. As an instructor, I'm always emphasizing to my students, to all of you, yield for pedestrians. They have a right to cross. Any intersection is a potential crosswalk area. But there are no lights. There are no signs. It's uncontrolled. Again, any intersection is a potential crosswalk area, but there no, there's no crosswalk. What I need you to do is yield, stop behind the sign, or if there's no sign, give them room, five feet, six feet, give them room so the pedestrians can walk right in front of you. Walk, W-A-L-K. Give them room and make eye contact if there is a a gentleman walking his uh, French Bulldog, Dan, I want to see you looking. And I want to see you scanning. I have to see eye movement. Left, middle, right. It is so important that you understand this. Pop more questions in. Let's keep, let's keep it coming. So uh, really important that you know who has to right of way. A lot of beginners don't know who has to right of way. And a right of way is given. When driving, it is your responsibility to start scanning the road, and sidewalks ahead of appropriate time when you get there. The good drivers start looking. I have a good driver named Ethan. Outstanding. He starts looking before you get there. By the time you get there, you see, you know, okay, there's two uh, bicycle riders. I have to yield and slow down. Good drivers look before they get there. Average drivers look when it's too late. I'm gonna give you an example. You're walking in your hallway at home. You hear your little brother, sister coming around the corner. You're at an angle and you see them before they get there, okay? They could run into you and knock your food over, whatever, drop your cell phone. So look before you get there. So when getting into an intersection, patience and being aware of all the surroundings key. This is so correct. This is so correct, excellent. That is 100% what I need all of you to understand. You have to be patient. Some elderly and they're vulnerable road users, okay? They're vulnerable road users. The vulnerable road users are elderly people, bicycle riders, and pedestrians. Vulnerable road users. All of you on here, me included, we need to be more aware of vulnerable road users, pedestrians who technically, if there's no sidewalk, should walk against the traffic so they can be seen. Technically, bicycle riders should be riding with the flow of the traffic. They should never be riding their bike against the traffic because we as motorists underestimate how fast they're going. They could be going 15, 20, 30, 40 miles an hour. And then we turn, maybe making a right turn into a gas station, a store, getting a smoothie. So as a result, they get striped. If you're a bicycle rider, you need to be wearing a helmet, you need to have the proper reflectors on your bike, and you need to look and make eye contact. It's your responsibility as a bicycle rider because they're part of the highway transportation system, the HTS, Highway Transportation System. And when you are making that right turn, you must look before, if I'm making a right turn, I'm coming up, you turn under a blinker, 100 feet, a half a block, 100, three cars. But blinker is on, right is always up, beginning drivers mix it up, they turn on the left blinker, other cars think they're going left, but as a reality, you're going right. So as that happens, you're confusing other drivers. So some cars may dip inside of us to the right, and your road tester or your instructor such as me, I want you to make a right turn to the light. You're like, okay, but you have on the wrong blinker. And then you get over to the right and then you look over the wrong shoulder. So we've cut off a car. Someone is laying on the horn, dun, dun, dun. horn, H-O-R-N. And then now you're really tense. So what I need you to do is just relax, make sure. And I always say up is right because I see in your mind, you're thinking 
down is left. Use your pinky. You don't take your hand off the wheel, use your pinky. So let's look at some more questions here. Always give the right away. It is a good mentality. This is correct. Give the right away to little kids. Give the right away to bicycle riders. Give the right away to motorcyclists. Give the right away to our elderly. If this is bringing you value, give it a thumbs up. Roads, like whatever you need to do. It is so important that you learn these fundamentals over time. It's one thing to learn how to drive. It's another thing to become a defensive driver. And I always teach all of you, because you're my, my family, I'm like your uncle, I'm always teaching you did, you, did you see grandma walk by? Did you see the little kid on the bike? Did you see the bicycle rider with the carbon fiber frame and the purple helmet? Oh, I'm sorry, Unc, I didn't see them. Slow down, take your time, cover your brake. There are more, I love the questions. Let's talk about hand positioning for a moment. At the end of the day, uh, your road tester, they don't care how you have your hands on the wheel. At the end of the day, you need to demonstrate vehicle control. So this is nine and three. This is 10 and two. This is seven and five. Eight and three. That's kind of, here's, here's about 8 o'clock, here's 3 o'clock. I'm kind of making the wheel small. I have very long arms. So if you have very long arms, 8 and 3 might not be good for you. It depends on your biomechanical measurements of your body. I'm 6'4", 6'5", 260, long arms. So it depends on the type of vehicle you're in. So what I need you to do is get into that vehicle, adjust your seat like I'm moving back move forward. You want to be no closer than six or eight inches from that steering wheel because there, there's an airbag in the steering wheel. So I want to see you drive comfortably. It could be 10 and 2. It could be 9 and 3. It could be 7 and 5. It depends on how your mom and dad drive. It depends on how your instructor taught you. It depends on how your sister, how your brother, how your bestie. Okay? So it just depends. 5, 10, you're a little shorter, shorter arms, that might work for you. So everyone's a little bit different. And what I do as an instructor, I take the time when you first get into the vehicle, I come over to your side, drop the questions in, I come over to your side and I adjust the seat. First, I put it all the way back. Your arms are straight, okay? Your arms are straight, that's too far. We wanna have a slight bend in our arms. And if you have a slight bend in your arms, you can turn properly. Have the slight bend in your arms so you can control the vehicle so you can turn properly it's super important and good instructors will take the time to help you and I need all of you to type in do you drive at 9 and 3 you, you know do you drive 10 and 2 how do you drive How do you hold the steering wheel? I need all of you to tell me. Are you nine and three? Are you 10 and two? It varies and it's really a personal preference where you feel comfortable. So for me to say nine and two, nine and three, it, it varies. So that's the old way I think and I see, I see nine and three. You have to do what's comfortable for you. Comfort is so important. And if you're not comfortable, you're gonna make more mistakes. You're gonna turn really stiff. Uh, if you're too far away, you won't be able to turn and you're going to turn really wide. Okay. So yielding the right of way, we want to yield for bicycle riders, right? We want to yield for pedestrians. And if there's no sidewalk, pedestrians should walk against traffic so they can be seen by cars. You never want to turn your back to traffic. So when you're riding or driving your car and you see pedestrians, if they're going on the wrong side of the road, it's a dangerous situation. Bicycle riders, there's something called dooring. You, as a young driver, you need to give the bicycle riders one full lane. You need to give them room, okay? And it's super important because they have a right to the road. We are sharing the road with pedestrians, Elderly, bicycle riders, scooters, school buses, semi-trucks, runners, 
so there's so many elements. So what I want you to do is take a deep breath, right? Take a deep breath for a moment, okay? Relax for a moment. And analyze, you wanna be safe, S-A-F-E. So when turning, which lane should I turn into uh, close to the yellow line or close to the curb? If you're making a right turn, you wanna turn to the curb lane. If you're making a left turn, T-U-R-N, you wanna turn by the double yellow. It's a very important element because if you turn around lane, if you're making a left and you jump over to the curb lane, I'm making a right turn, we will have contact. And then that will be automatic failure because your instructor, and, and type these in, your instructor will have to maneuver because we do not want to have an accident. Accidents do happen. We want to be safe. We want to be consistent. Keep those questions coming in. Always keep your turn as short as possible. It facilitates a smoother flow of traffic. If you're just joining us, I'm a state certified driving instructor. I teach teens and adults. We're talking about passing your driving test. I'm here to answer your questions. I'm here to clear up any confusion and to help you be successful and live your best life. This is bringing you value. Thumbs up, hearts, likes, diamonds. Let's give it some value. And let's go ahead and talk about this. Keep your turn as short as possible. We were talking about pedestrians. I want to educate you on this. So please listen. It's really important to know who has the right of way in traffic situations that you encounter. We talked about encountering vulnerable road users. Okay. And if you're listening, you should be able to type in some of the vulnerable road users. Who are these vulnerable road users? You should be able to type it in. This is your virtual class. Let's go ahead and get it. Vulnerable road users. Who are they? What do they consist of? One vulnerable road user are bicyclists. We have to give them a full lane of traffic. Okay? I'm struggling with trying to keep a steady speed, not going too heavy. A lot of beginner drivers, from my experience, barely push the gas. So if the speed limit is 55, we're at 40. We're 15 under. We're at 45. We're 10 under. So here's what happens. The light is a quarter of a mile ahead. You are 10 under the limit. The light's green. We're a quarter of a mile away. It's a stale green. And you should know what a stale green light is. The light has been green a long time. It can change to yellow at any time. So we have two car lanes before we are in the intersection. The light turns yellow. Now we're forced to make a decision. Do we speed up and accelerate through? Kind of dangerous. Do we slam the brakes? Dangerous. So what I encourage all of you to do is have gentle, lightweight pressure on that gas pedal and gradually increase your speed. You have to stay with the flow of the traffic. So what I need you to do is stay with the flow of the traffic. If you're going a little bit fast, you lift your foot off the pedal. And over time, you will get better. Is it a mora? Hopefully I'm pronouncing it right. You will get better. And if you push too hard, you'll go too fast. If you don't push enough, you'll go too slow. So speed control comes around that third. Thank you. So what I want you to do is practice holding that pedal and then the car will respond. If it gets up to speed and you hear the motor going, then you lift your foot and then check your speed. If you're going too slow, you push a little bit more. Every car is different. Every driver's said car is different. Every regular automotive manufacturer car is different. And if you're driving a manual, now you have to push in the clutch shift to second. And then you accelerate up to about 35. Now you're up to 35. Let's say the speed limit is 50. You accelerate. You push the clutch in. You shift up to fourth gear. So every car is a little bit different. You're going to have to spare them. Now, if you're going downhill, you will increase speed. So you're going to have to adjust your speed to match the conditions of the road. I'm here for you. This brought you value. Drop a rose. Drop a like. Drop a diamond. I need more of you to ask questions. This is why I'm here, to see you be successful, to see you get ready to take that next step in life. And that's so important. Okay. So we talked about failing to yield the car for pedestrians. Pedestrians always have the right of way. Pedestrians and car conflicts happens in parking lots. 
Pedestrian and car conflicts happen in downtown areas. Pedestrian and car conflicts happen when pedestrians are not walking where they should be. What, what, what do you mean? The intersection is 100 feet away, a pedestrian pops up between cars. You didn't expect that. So what I need you to do when you're driving, you need to, we're talking about driving in North America. If we're driving in the UK or Australia, we're driving on the left, same principle supply. You have your car properly centered. You don't want to hug the right because doors could pop open. That's called dooring. I talked about that. If you're riding your bike, and many of you have, if you've been riding your bike, just put in bike. Okay? If you've been riding your bike. So, um, you're driving along and all of a sudden a door pops open. You're riding your bike. All of a sudden a door pops open. That is called dooring. What uh, drivers need to do, if I'm in the car and... I'm on the left side. I'm driving in North America. You need to reach over, use your right hand, and open the door. It will turn your body so you can look. Because a lot of motorists have hit bicyclists because they are not paying attention to the environment. So you have to pay attention to the environment. Okay? I'm going to give you some information. I typed in what is a hawk. Take a moment. This deals with driving. This deals with driver education. This deals with pedestrian safety. So I'm typing in the word hawk. Many of you have this, so I'm going to let that kind of chill for a moment. The final road test skills. Teacher intervenes to maintain vehicle control. That could be automatic failure. What does this mean? If you're making a right turn, and you're about to hit the curb, the instructor has to turn the wheel. Okay? That is grounds for potential failure. Speeding 10 or more over the limit. Automatic failure. You want to drive at the speed limit. If you speed 10 or more over, automatic failure. Dangerous maneuver. You are making a lane change, but you didn't check your blind spot. Uh, the instructor says, I need you to make a lane change to the left. You turn on the round blinker. You look over the right shoulder, but you should be looking over the left shoulder. You cut off a car. You will be marked down. If I'm in the car with you, I'm going to make mental note, and then I'll talk to you in the end. You strike an object. Automatic failure. Okay? I ask you what a hawk is. Not the animal. The hawk. H-A-W-K. A hawk is a high, uh, a hawk is a design where uh, the pedestrian puts, pushes a button and a series of lights light up to get attention to road users. And this attention allows drivers to stop. Hawks cost anywhere from two hundred fifty to five hundred thousand dollars. They could be in Chicago. They could be in New York. They could be in any community that has a lot of pedestrian foot traffic. So you push the button. It lights up like a Christmas tree, and then this allows it goes from yellow to red, and this allows people, pedestrians and motorists, to slow down, and then a bicyclist or a pedestrian can safely cross the street. I'm giving you some other information, so you really need to be listening. You need to be putting your comments in. You need to be able to identify targets when you're driving. What is the target? A target could be a pedestrian. A target could be the stop line. A target could be the light. When you're driving, there is a lot of visual stimulation in the driving environment. What I need you to do as a driver, getting ready for your road test, or taking your fourth, fifth, or sixth lesson, yes, the button is pressed. That is correct. Thank you. The button is pressed, and then it lights up like a Christmas tree, and then the pedestrians and motorists stop. Thank you. That's great. So let's continue. Um, you want to search 10 to 15 seconds ahead of you so you can see trouble before it gets there remember i mentioned ethan who was a who is 
He's finishing up tomorrow. A really good driver.